Hi everyone, welcome back to this chapter. We're going to do uh, circuits that are in parallel and in series. So these are going to be combination circuits. This is probably the hardest part of the chapter because it's a bit confusing what to do first and things like that. However, let's look at this question. Uh, the circuit is connected to a 12 volt battery, 12 volts. Each resistor has a resistance of 200 ohms. So this is 200 ohms, this is 200 ohms, and this is 200 ohms. Find the total current of the circuit. So when you're doing problems with combinations, what you want to do is you want to break down the resistors into more simplified manners until you just have like one resistance. So we're finding the total current. We're first going to find what the total resistance is, but we're going to break down step by step. So first, I'm going to break down these two that are in series. And we know it's in series because the electrons are going to be flowing through the same wiring right here. Okay. So let me just draw this out real quick. What I have is dun, dun, dun. Uh, this is going to be 12 volts. And then over here, sorry, not the best. Uh, then like this. So we have, we're going to combine these two. So we have 400 ohm because those two were in series with each other. And we know this is in parallel with these two because the current splits off. Whenever the current splits off, that means they're in parallel. So this is going to be 200. So now that I have it simplified like this, now I want to simplify these two together. So in order to do that, our total I know is going to be equal to 1 over 400 plus 1 over 200. And then I get our total is equal to, let me do that in my calculator real quick, 1 divided by 400 plus 1 divided by 200. And the inverse of that, and I get 133.33. So 133.33 ohms. So now we have this simplified to be looking like this. 12 volts, and then the R total right here, and this is going to be 133.33 ohms. Now that we have that, we can find what the total current is. How we can do this is if we look at the total voltage, total current, total resistance. Total voltage is 12, total current is what we're looking for, total resistance, ooh, let me erase that real quick. Total resistance is going to be 133.33. Now let's put this into our calculators. 12 divided by 133.33. And we get 0 0.09. 0 0.09 amps. Okay. Okay, let's try some other ones. Uh, so conceptual question here. Parallel resistors have a current running through them. R1 is equal to 50 ohms. R2 is equal to 100 ohms, and R3 is equal to 200 ohms. Uh, which resistor will have more of a current running through it? So this is interesting. You might think, okay, so they split off, and this has the least amount of resistance, so this must have the most current running through it. And even though that is, um, that's a good way to think about it, what we should also know is the current is going to split off here. So over here, it'll split off. However, the current will come back over here and rejoin. So it's going to have the most current along this wire and this wire here. So R3 will have the most amount of current running through it out of all the other resistors. Okay, The second most would be this 50 and the last, the least would be this R2. All right, let's look at this combination. What is the total current in this circuit? What is the voltage drop across the R3? What is the current through R1? So again, combination. Now, so we have these two in parallel because the current splits, and then this combination with this are in series with each other. Okay, so first what I'm going to do is I am going to simplify this here. So what I have is I have this 18 volts, and I'm going to simplify this resistor, that resistor there, and what we get, then this is going to be 4 ohms, but I want to figure out what this one is. So I'm going to do 1 over our total is equal to 1 over 3 plus 1 over 6. Then let me find what our total is equal to. 1 divided by 3 plus 1 divided by 6. Inverse of that, and I get 2 ohms. Okay, so now I know this here is 2 ohms. Now I have that, I could simplify this even further. What I could do now is I could change this. This is going to be 18 volts. And then I can find what the R total is. But since these are in series, I just add them together and I get 6 ohms. 
So for the first part, we're looking for the total current. So I'm going to do the total voltage is equal to total current times total resistance. So 18 is equal to I, which I'm looking for, and 6. And now I, I know, is going to be equal to 3 amps. All right, so what is the voltage drop across each resistor? Okay, so this is where it becomes a little bit complicated. So since this is in parallel with each other, we should know that they're both going to have the same voltage drop because the amount, uh, the volt how the voltage is going to be pushing the electrons from here to here is going to be the same for both of these, okay? So I could just kind of look at this right here. I should, I should be looking at that and looking at that. So I know that the current that's going to be going through here is 3 amps, and the resistance is 2. So the current times the resistance is the voltage. So it's going to be 2 times 3. So this is going to be 6 volts here. And then for this one, there's going to be 3 amps going through here, and this is 4 resistance. So uh, 3 times 4 is going to be 12 volts. And like we noticed, it adds up to 18 like we should. So what is the voltage drop through, uh, what is the voltage drop across R3? So R3, that's going to be 12 volts. Oh, I should rectangle that again. All right, what is the cur current through R1? What is the current? Okay, now we're looking for what the current is through R1. We know that the current here is going to be 3 amps and here is going to be 3 amps but we know some of it splits off some of it goes this way and then some of it goes this way so now what let's find what the current is over here um what we what we're going to be looking at is v1 is equal to i1 r1 we know what v1 is that's 6 volts we found it before so this is going to be 6 i1 uh we know what well, that's what we're looking for r1 is equal to 3 so we know that I1 is going to be equal to 2 amps. And since the total is 3 amps, that means 2 went this way and 1 went that way. And that should make sense because this one has less resistance. Okay? Dun, dun, dun. All right, let's look at this combination here. So again, we have some that are in series with one another and then some that are in parallel. Okay? How I like to know what to do is I'd like to kind of look at the flow of the current for the electrons. So as it's flowing, we're going to see this here. We're going to have to simplify that first. So we're going to simplify this first. And then everything else we are going to be in series with one another. So I'm going to do 1 over R. Uh, let me call that R23 is equal to 1 over 3 plus 1 over 6. So R23 is going to equal, i put that in my calculator. 1 divided by 3 plus 1 divided by 6. And I get 0 0.5, oops, the inverse of that, which is 2. So this is going to be 2 ohms. Okay. And now I know this is all in series with one another. So what I have is 24 volts. And then I have this here. And I simplify that, this here. And what I have is 2 ohms. 2 ohms here, simplified. And then 4 ohms. So then I can see that the R total is going to be equal to 4, 6, 8 ohms. So this is going to be equal to 8 ohms. Now I found that the R total, I can find what the I total is by doing V total is equal to current total times resistance total. So 24 is equal to I, R being 8. And then I, I find, is going to be equal to 3 amps. Okay? 3 amps. What we should know now is that the current going through here, it's going to split off here, but then it's going to join back here. It's going to be 3 amps. So we should know that R1 and R4 is also going to have 3 amps of current, okay? Because they don't split off at all at during that time. Over here, some of the current is going to split off, so we need to know that. So now that we know that this one here has 3 amps, we could find what the voltage is. We could do uh, V equals IR. I is 3. R is 2, so that we know that this is going to be equal to 6 volts. Also, we know this one is 3 amps, so we can find what the voltage is. R is 4, A is 3, so then we can find that this is going to be 12 volts. Okay? And there's two ways we can uh, find what the voltage is for this one. We could uh, either look at the simplified version of this, which is 2, because we know that the voltage is going to be the same for both of these. Or what we can do is we know that this is 6 and 12, and that's 18, and the total is 24, so that both of these are mean uh, they're going to be 6. However, uh, let's, let's just do it this way. 
So we know the current is going to be 3 amps, and the resistance is 2, so again we find that it's going to be 6 volts. Okay? So I'm going to do 6 volts, 6 volts. So now let's look at this. I'm going to do V2 is equal to current 2 times resistance 2. V2 we found is 6. Current 2 is what we're looking for. Resistance of that one is 3. So now I find that I2 is equal to 2 amps. This is 2 amps. And if I know that this is 2 amps, I know that 1 is going to be going into the other one. So there's going to be 1 amp going here. But let's just do it, just show the work. V3 is equal to I3, R3. V3 being 6 volts. Current 3, which we're looking for. Resistance 3, uh, which is 6. And then we see, like uh, I mentioned, it's going to be 1 amp. It's going to be, whoops, 1 amp. Okay. Bum, bum, bum. All right, now let's finish up with this conceptual question here. Look at the fire diagram to the right. List in order from greatest to least which points have the greatest amount of current flowing through them. And I guess uh, which one has the least. So which one has the greatest amount. So if we look at this, what we see, we have a lot of points here. We have uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L. So, what you might, some people might think like, oh, okay, there's going to be the most amount of current over here because that's where the current starts to flow and then it gets less and less as it goes. But remember, the only time the current becomes less uh, through a circuit is when it splits off. So, the least amount of current is when it's going to be splitting off over here. So, at A, B, C, D, uh, it's going to split off here, so that's not going to count. I, J, K, and L, they all have the same amount of current, and that's where it's going to have the most amount of current. Okay? So they're all equal to each other. What we know here is it's going to split off, so this wire here and this wire here are going to have a uh, different amount of current. Since there's less resistance here, that means this side of the wire is going to have more current. So E and F, they have the same amount of current, uh, which is going to be more than this side. And then this over here is going to be G and H. Alright? Alright guys, thanks for watching.